it's okay. This seems to have worked. Once again, my name is Gaio Enchelun. I'm now a member for, of the uni for roughly two years with a short break in between. And I started teaching, I think, half a year after I joined the uni, so now more than a year of teaching and also one year of moderating the e-uni, e-war study group, which unfortunately more or less died out half a year ago when I was not able to invest so much time into this. Okay, one and a half hours to go about e-war. This class, for a rough overview, we will cover the four basic types of electronic warfare after a short introduction, in which we handle basics of e-war and other stuff within the game. So I hope you're all docked up somewhere in space or safe otherwise. So I already said we use Classroom 2 in Mumble, or otherwise you wouldn't hear me, and also the Classroom 2.e minus uni chat channel in-game. What we will handle, four basic types of electronic warfare. This is one offensive form of electronic warfare. This is target painting. This is the min meta form of e-war. And then we have three defensive forms of e-war. One of them is against enemy's weapons. These are DMR with tracking disruption. Then two defensive forms against enemy's ship's sensors, which is remote sensor dampening, the Galanti form, and electronic countermeasures, ECM, by the Caldari. Okay, so at first I said we come to some basic things. At first I want to tell you something about stacking penalties. Why stacking penalties? I hear them quite often during the class, so a few words about them. I'm just pasting some numbers in the chat channel, so classroom.euni, and these are the numbers for stacking penalties. If we activate multiple modules on the same target, then they will be due to Sorry, I just read that Classroom 2 Uni is overloaded. He can't join it. Uh, one moment. Can somebody check, please, how many people we have in the Classroom 2.e Uni channel? This shouldn't be a problem. Or I don't know what is the... 50 is, ah, that's, that's probably possible. Uh, I think it has to be in lecture. Yeah, uh, these classroom channels were especially set up. And yeah, uh, it's immediate to delay it. That's the problem. And unfortunately, I cannot change that. Oh, can I, perhaps? No, I cannot do so. Um, okay. Forget everything what I said. We are switching to lecture.euni and I hope it work. So, everybody, I have to apologize for this inconvenience, but this is also my first time in the public uh, EUNI mumbled server. And uh, please switch. I'm giving you a few moments to go there. Thank you for posting this in the class channel. And then in one, two minutes, we'll start over there again, and I will point that out to... Uh, the people who can change that. Uh, okay, I hope everybody is now in the lecture channel. And we are going to continue there. I will just once again post the numbers for stacking penalties there and start again. Okay, these are the numbers for stacking penalties. For in this lecture, you will often hear stay in lecture uni, even if the classroom channels have now been 
repaired. Uh, within this lecture, you often hear that these modules are due to stacking penalties. The meaning of this is that the second module you use on the same target is not as effective as the first. For example, while the first module you activate has the highest effectiveness, the second is down to 87%, the third even to 57 the fourth to 28 and so on. The fourth, uh, the fifth had only 10%, and the sixth you can forget with 3% of the original effectiveness. This means that the more modules are active on this target, the less effective they are. They are not stacked in order of um, activating, they are stacked in effectiveness. So the highest effective module always gets the first place and then it's counted down. So you don't have to fear that with a, a not so effective module you kick a higher effectiveness out from the field. But, as you can see, four modules or even three modules, more modules on the same target are not as effective if they are due to stacking penalties. Just keep this in mind. You will hear this in this class quite often. Okay, the other thing is E was called a force multiplier. So what's a force multiplier? A force multiplier means the easiest thing is, for example, two battleships fight each other. Then you add another battleship and you have effectively doubled the force. Easy. But on the other hand, you can also use, for example, an e-warship. Because even a small e-warship, be it now a small dampening frigate or a small ECM frigate, even a small disruptive frigate, uh, can turn this battle because it can, for example, with a bit of luck or effective piloting, take out a battleship on the other side. So you have effectively multiplied your forces or reduced the forces of the enemy without just brute force and adding more battleships. This is the meaning of a force multiplier. And this is both to E-War, the other force multiplier you will hear about is, for example, Logi, logistics ships. But here we are about EWAR, so our force multipliers are EWAR. In former times, the Uni used EWAR with a very high effectiveness. In the later times, so let's say one year, half a year, it switched more and more to Logi because now more people in the Uni are also able to field Logi. That was not the possibility every time. Okay. For all E-War, you will hear about you have two dark skills and two consecutive skills. These I will name for every form of E-War and at the end of the class I will tell you some skill skills which are effective for all the types of E-War. Okay. I will now present you some general links which can be interesting for the people with uh, interest in e-war. So, the first link is just to our e-war guide on the e-uni wiki. It's a very interesting guide you can read. I'll just give you these links that you can follow them up if this class got you interested into e-war, if you're already interested in EVO before, it would be even nicer, because ECM is very, or can be very complicated, there's a special guide about ECM on the wiki, and then I have two links on the wiki, which are interesting for the ship types. Why ship types? I want to fly EVO, I don't want to learn anything about ships. For us EVO pilots, it's interesting to know about enemy ships, because on the one hand we have to know which modules to use and to which ships our E-War is effective against and against what ships not, so that you can decide which ships to target with your form of E-War. So two ship lists on the EFUNI wiki, and at the end I will give you the links to two portable document files these you cannot open in the in-game browser. You have to use the out-of-game browser. One of them is a nice overview about ship types. Unfortunately, not updated for uh, 
the last changes. So where are sh some ships missing out, and not every ship is up to date. And the other is a nice overview about EVE in general. But on the first side, we have the colors for the different races and EVO types, because every race has a different EVO type, and every type, every race uses a different type of sensor. For example, the Kildare use gravimetric, the Amar use radar, the Minmetal radar and the Galenti use magnetic sensors. So this will be interesting. Even be also here is introduced some color code for the different races, which you f also find on these EVE online ship reference chart. This color code will come along during the class when we start, because there the color code is very useful if you want to be effective. Okay. Now a long introduction, and now to the interesting part, E-War. The first form of E-War we talk about today is target painting, done by Minotaur ships, and it's an offensive form of E-War. So, what does this type of E-War do, and why it is offensive? In EVE, every ship has a size. This size is the so-called signature size. It's handled as a ball. Every ship is handled as a ball in EVE, and the size of this ball is the signature size. If you have a look at your ship, you can do so at the NEOCOM, on the left-hand side usually in the fitting window, and then on the right-hand side under targeting, next to this radar-like symbol, you, s you should have a number followed by meters, and if you hover the mouse over it, it should read signature radius. This is the effective size of your ship. Just to say, the bigger a ship, the faster it is to lock, the easier it is to hit, and the more damage missiles can do to it if the explosion radius of the missiles is bigger than the ship. So signature radius is important. Signature radius can go from roughly 20 meters for a frigate, especially interceptors, up to several hundred meters, especially no. from the battleship class and the battlecruiser class, and even bigger for the capitals. So, and now, what does this target painter do? with the signature size, it increases it. This is done, for example, with the Target Painter 1. I just pasted the link into the Lecture EUME channel. If you left-click on it, then it should show you the information about the Target Painter 1. Okay, the targeting subsystem that projects an electronic tag to the target, thus making it easier to target and hit. And if you read down Penalty, Stacking penalized means this module is the, was what I said before due to stacking penalties. It's not so effective using multiple modules on the same target, especially not more than four. What does it do? If you have a look at the attributes tab, and then you see on the under signature radius bonus 25%. It makes it one fourth bigger. This can be this number can be much enlarged by different skills or by ship bonuses. So, what do we need to use this module? The basic skill is target painting. It just allows you to use the target painter, and as for all skills first skills of EWAR, it reduces the capacity need for the module. So it does not make this module more effective, it just uses less capacitor. All EWAR modules have quite a high capacity usage, so less capacitor is always good for them. But if you raise this skill to 4, you will be able to use the consecutive skill, which is called signature focusing for target painting, and here the effectiveness is raised. So 5% per level to the nature radius multiplier. 
So with this, you make the effect larger. You can make the enemy's chip look even bigger, easier to hit, and so on. Okay. We have two ships of the Minmata, which are bonus for it, to take one ships, I should add. I will just talk about the basic ships here. This is the frigate-sized Vigil. If you have a look at it, once again by left-clicking, then you see that the Minmata frigate skill gives you a boost to the effectiveness and also to the optimal range, 7.5% and 10% to the range. The 7.5% is now the general bonus for almost all E-War Deck 1 ships, exception again, ECM, Caldaris, and it was raised a few months ago, so all forms of E-War except Caldari were buffed. And, like almost all other races, there is a Tech 1 cruiser, which is bonused for E-War. This is the Ellicos. And here you have the same bonus, 7.5% per level to effectiveness, and the other bonus is now a weapon bonus. So for our case, interesting is 7.5% bonus to target painter effectiveness. These are the two ships if you want to be an effective target painter. So, how do we use it? You use it like every other module. You lock a target, then activate your EVO module. But on which target? That's easy for target painting. Because if you are in a fleet, then the fleet commander will call a primary target, and you paint the primary target. That's easy. Your E-War is only effective if someone tries to hit or lock the enemy, so you should paint the primary target. Unfortunately, if you have multiple targets and you paint multiple targets, then only the ones your fleet colleagues are shooting at is an effective use of E-War. You cannot, like the other forms of E-War, take multiple ships out of the fight, which we are harming you. This is no defensive form of E-War. And so, unfortunately, the number of target painting ships in the fleet, or which are needed in the fleet, is not so high. You just need a few of them. Because you only have one primary target, perhaps you already painted a secondary target, but as you have seen, more than four modules are not effective. These are two or three cruiser or even three or four uh, target painting frigates. So that's not so much. If you have more, nice, but they are not so effective anymore. Okay. When is target painting especially useful in fleets? For example, it's useful for Stealth bombers, because they launch large missiles at small target, which is uh, always... Is. It's also helpful for big ships to target and do more damage to small ships. Both turret ships and uh, missile ships. But, as I said, there's usually no need for high numbers. PVE. This form of e is used in PVE, because it's useful for fighting smaller ships than yourself for example in missions or wormholes, and it's mostly used by missile boats because of the explosion radius is bigger than the ships you fight so you use target painters on missile boats in PVE sometimes ok this was the part about target painting if you now have questions about target painting then please write them in the lecture.euni channel and I'll try to answer them if what well, they should be about target painting if you have general questions then you should wait till the end of the class where we will have a general question um, we had a question by Mithas Hailborn how does optimal range affect things 
Ja. Okay, I will first go to the question with the optimal range. Please scroll a bit up and have a look at the target painter 1, which I posted before. Under the attributes tab, you find an optimal range and an accurate fall off. Usually, optimal range means up to this range, your module has the highest effectiveness. And then it drops down. For example, at optimal range, you have the full effect. At optimal range plus one times fall off, you only have 50% of your effectiveness. So your, for example, signature radius bonus you usually give is only half as much. And you also have a 50% chance that your module is not working. And at optimal range plus two times fall off, you have no effectiveness at all. So, for this, with any, without any bonuses, you can use full effectiveness up to 25 kilometers, half effectiveness to 75 kilometers, and no effect above 125 kilometers. Keep in mind, this is the basic module without any bonuses, and the bonuses to this can be quite big, so the numbers get higher, much higher in real combat situations afterwards. This optimal range thing is the same for <coughs> it's also the same for guns. So going to the next question. Um, does target painting affect gun boats as much as missile boats? Um, especially in PvP it does because if you fight smaller ships than yourself it's harder to hit them and harder to hit them with full damage and their target painting helps it's a different uh, to uh, PvE there you find target painters much only on missile boats but they can help also the gunboats uh, question by Kexpel Stealth bombers use target painters themselves. Uh, yes, they sometimes do, <coughs> but usually they field other forms of e-war. But there are some fits for PVE stealth bombers, for example. Some people use stealth bombers for um, ratting in uh, Nalsec, for example, and then they often have target painters fitted. Um, question by Dehydra. Is a target painter useful with any other module? Signal boosters, for example. Um, signal boosters help you target faster, and so you can target paint faster. Keep in mind, if a, uh, if a ship is target painted, the other ships can also target it faster. So you have no, in principle, not a need to fit a signal booster yourself, because usually you are fast enough to switch targets. Um, to remind you that the target painter is a medium slot module, so it's not used in a high slot. It's a medium slot module. Ah, okay, this question was already answered in the chat channel. Sorry. Okay, I think these were all questions I've seen. If there are more questions... Please let me know, or if I answered one question not the way you'd liked it, or you want to know more, then please ask now. Okay, obviously. Ah! Question by John Bucket. Min meter ships are optimal for target painters. Uh, not all min meter ships. But target painting is the Eve War form for Minmetar, so we have ships with special bonuses. These are the Vigil and the Bellicose I posted before. They have ships. These are the Tech 1 ships, which have bonuses to target painting. There are Tech 2 ships, which also have bonuses for target painting, but uh, these I won't discuss in this basic class. 
The other races have also ships which are bonus, uh, have, can use it, but they have no ships in the tech one which are bonus for that. But for example, a lot of drakes use the target painter, especially in PvE. Okay, going on. Now we switch to the defensive forms of E-War. Starting with the tracking disruption by the Amerians. It's a defensive form of E-War against enemies' weapons. So this affects weapons only. Especially only turret-based weapons, so projectiles, lasers, and hybrids, it does not affect missiles at all. I think for one, two years, there's a still ongoing discussion that tracking disruption will be changed to also affect missiles. Up to now, it has not been implemented into the game. It's only useful against turret-based weapons. Okay, at first, you have to know something about tracking. I will tell you a very short story about tracking. If you want to know more about I give you a link which you can use in an out of game browser to look at it. And there's also tracking classes which you can attend within the uni. If you want to know more about tracking, just use it. Here you just have to you know two things about it. Weapons have an optimal range and a fall-off, like I told before in answering the question, which was here in the channel before, and they also have tracking. So what's tracking? Imagine you have, um, you have something orbiting you, and you have to point it with your weapon. For example, take a water pistol and someone running around you, and then tracking is how fast you can follow him. If he's running very fast and you're quite slow, then you won't hit him because you can't follow him. If you're fast and he's slow and very big, then you will hit him easily. So, for what we are going on, keep in mind, the bigger one is, the easier it is to hit. The slower someone is, the easier he's to hit. So that's the idea between the tracking disruptor. Also, on the other hand, keep in mind, range. You have a limited range, so if he's out of this range, you cannot hit him. And then if someone disrupts your range, for example, keeping this example, if someone lowers the pressure in your water pistol, then you can't shoot that far, and your, tr your water pistol is range disrupted. Okay? No one said he loved this example before, and all this time I taught this class. Okay. So how do we do this? We have a tracking disruptor. Again, tech one meta zero module. This is the tracking disruptor. Disrupts the turret range and tracking speed of the target ship. Modo module can be loaded with scripts. Keep in mind, I said something about scripts. What's and also once again penalty stacking penalized. This module is due to stacking penalties, like the target painter before. Okay. We have a look at the attributes tab at once. So, we have now three bony here. Tracking speed bonus. Effectively, it's a malus. It's minus 17%. We have an optimal range bonus, minus 17%, and a fall-off bonus. So, we have one bonus tracking speed, two bony for the range. And now, once again, he said something about scripts. So what are scripts? These modules can be used with scripts. Imagine like ammunition for guns, for example. And they change it. You have two different scripts. You can use this module without a script. Then you have these 17%. Or you can use the tracking speed script. If you left tick on it and have a look at the attributes tab, then it says Modification of optimal range bonus, minus 100%, fall-off bonus, one, minus 100%, and tracking speed bonus, plus 100%. What does this script do? It changes 
your disruptor from affecting range and tracking speed to just tracking speed and doubles this bonus. The other thing, just the complete opposite way, no tracking speed malus, just range, and therefore it doubles the malus on the enemy ship. Keep in mind, if you change this module with scripts and use um, uh, sorry, wrong sentence. If you use two tracking disruption modules on the same target, it will be uh, due to stacking penalties. If you use two scripted ones, one with tracking speed, the other one with optimal range, I think I posted the wrong script. I have to change it. Um, then they are not due to stacking penalties. So if you have multiple modules, and even if you want both effects on the target, please use scripts, because then you have a higher effectiveness. Okay. The scripts, uh, the scripts, the skills for this, the first one is weapon disruption. It's the same 5% per level capacitor need reduction. And the second skill, the consecutive skill, is turret destabilization, 5% per level to the effectiveness. Yeah, thank you, Leonti. These are the correct scripts. Yeah, on my, obviously, they linked the disruption when I copied it. Thank you. Yeah, these are the correct scripts. Thank you, Leonti. I have to look that I link the correct ones next time. Yep, have a look at these scripts. These are the correct ones for the tracking disruption modules. Okay, these were the two scripts and before the two um, skills you need. Okay, I said this one is the Amarian form, so two Amarian ships. I will come to this. And that was the questions. Uh, the scripts are the same for all modules for all the weapon disruption modules, so you can use the same scripts in Tech 1 in all meta modules and the Tech 2 modules. Only the modules change the script, are always the same. The Crucifier is the Marian Frigate. It has a 7.5% bolt to the effectiveness and 10% to the optimal range of the tracking disruptor. More or less exactly the same bony as the vigil at the Minmissa side got. The cruiser is not a arbitrator. 75% bonus to effectiveness and interestingly 10% bonus to drone hit points, damage and mining yield. So the arbitrator is not only an EWAR cruiser, it's also the Marion drone cruiser. Quite interesting because it can field also in deep Yes, you will even find some people which use arbitrators as solo PV, P boats against enemy turret-based ships, because they can disrupt the turrets, so drastically reduce the enemy's effectiveness in hitting them on turret boats, and then still do some nice damage with their drones. Okay. Once again, it's only useful against turret-based ships. Projectiles, hybrids, and laser ships. So how do we identify a ship if it's turrets or missiles? As the rule of thumb that Amar and Galenti have mainly turret weapons, the Kaldari mainly missiles, and the Minmetar are somewhat in between. But that's the first usage for the ship list. There you can see if a ship is turret-based or missile-based. It does not do anything else against other weapon systems, only turrets. Of course, you can also have a look in space, if you sh see a ship shooting missiles, then your tracking disruption is not useful on them. So, 
I mentioned this once before. Do we use them? Yes, especially to avoid stacking penalties, or if you want to have a high effect. So why? For example, if you are in a small ship and want to orbit a big ship in a close orbit, disrupt tracking. Bigger ships always have problems hitting smaller ships if they have a transversal. So it's not about speed, it's about speed perpendicular to the target, for example, in orbiting, not flying directly into the other ship. <coughs> then you would script, for example, to help a Tekla, which is spiraling into a big ship, disrupt tracking that he won't be hit. Or if you want to orbit far, disrupt range. It can be especially useful against snipers, because... If you reduce their weapon range, and then they shoot at you, they can't hit you, because then you're out of their range. It can be very interesting against snipers. But, of course, then you have a ship with boasted tracking range, and the effectiveness. Uh, yeah, your ship has to be able to lock them, and your modules must be able to hit out that far. The scripts are changed on the fly like laser crystals so within one tick, one second so you can change them very fast and always keep enough scripts of each type for all your systems if you have three modules on your ship carry thick six scripts three of each type please ok PVP scenarios yeah as I already said, it's useful for frigates to help them fly inside the enemy guns. And they are not useful against missiles. I can't stress this enough. You, you sometimes see that a lot of people use um, tracking disruption on kill mails. But mostly we do this not to reduce the effectiveness of enemy missile ships, mostly they do this to get on the kill mail. So, if you are in a tracking disruption ship, please do it against the turret-based ships and not against the missile ships, even if you miss out a kill. They may not be useful against ships with a great tracking or great weapon range. For example, if you have small ships fighting big ships, and it's mostly not useful to tracking disrupt the small uh, to yeah to disrupt the tracking of the small ships because we have a very easy to hit the big ships. And on the other hand, it's not so uh, good to disrupt the range on big ships with small ships orbiting them because we are still inside their weapon range. They have to use against snipers long range ships. You can use them, but you have to make clear if it is you. Okay, this was what I wanted to tell you about the tracking disruption. You can start to write questions in the lecture.eu.ni channel, where there's already one question. Are these effective against medium slot fittings such as the small NOS? The small NOS fair 2 it's an energy stealing module, it's a high slot module, and they are not turret based, so tracking disruption does not do anything to them. It is only turret tracking, projectile turrets, hybrid turrets, laser turrets. These modules are not affected by this. Are there more questions about tracking disruption, the Marian form of e war? Okay, obviously that's not the case. As a Galanti pilot, I have to say, okay, I don't like the Marines too much either. So, do not learn much, too much about them. And so we have more time for the next form of E-War, which is remote sensor dampening. The Galanti form of E-War. It's a defensive E-War against enemies' ships' sensors. 
So, why now ships? At first we said, okay, we reduced the effectiveness of those weapons. Why are we now fighting against sensors? And what are these sensors? Once again, we have a look at the fitting window. And there, on the right-hand side, directly right to targeting, you find your maximum targeting range. This is up to which distance your ship can lock an enemy target. And if he's far away than this, you cannot lock him. And if you had a lock before, it breaks. So every ship out of this range cannot be locked by you, so not be harmed by you with weapons, which require a lock, which is almost everything. Okay. One level below, next to the radar dish, we have a number with millimeters. If you hover over it, it's called scan resolution. What is? Our sensors not only have a range, we have a resolution. And what does this resolution do? It tells us how fast we can lock. This scan resolution can be below 100 for bigger ships. Even battleships have it below 100. And can go to several thousand. Most interceptors have more than thousand. And with certain modules or assistances, we can get up to several thousands. Why is this interesting? Because if you sit in a battleship, it can take ages till you lock a frigate. It can sometimes take up to 30 seconds without any e-war or sword. On the other hand, if you lock a battleship in a frigate, the battleship is bigger, you have a higher resolution on a frigate, it's within a few seconds, almost instantly. The smaller the things, the longer it takes to lock them. And now the Galantis come and damp these sensors. So we start with them. What do we need to damp this? And also I have to tell you, dampening sounds much nicer than disruption. So, for me it sounds like a nice e-war. But it can be quite effectiveness. So, to do this form of e-war, you need, for example, the Tech 1 Meta Zero module, the remote sensor, damp now 1. Once again, reduces the range and speed of a targeted ship's sensors. Range, we had before, the speed is the illusion. Once again, this module can be loaded with scripts and stacking panelized. Once again. If you have a look at the attributes tab of the remote sensor demo, you will see that it has two bony, that's the scan resolution bonus, minus 15%, and the maximum targeting range bonus also minus 15%. Now there are two scripts. Which do more or less the same as the scripts for the Amerians, for the tracking disruption. They nullify one bony and double the other. So you can either reduce the tensor range in this example by 30%, or their scan resolution also by 30%. Keep in mind, this is an unbonused module without any skills. And this is all already 30%. So it's very easy to get over 50% of targeting range, for example. This means you can get, with a single module, for example, if you have a sniper which will shoot through at you from 100 kilometers and he has a targeting range of, for example, 110 kilometers, you activate one module of which a frigate carries two or three and a cruiser up to four, then he's down to 60, 50 kilometers and cannot harm you because he cannot lock you. And so this sniper is out of his job quite easy. 
Okay, we'll come to this once again later. At first I want to tell you which skills you need. The first skill is sensor linking, which and the other thing is signal suppression, which uses, uh, which gives you a higher effectiveness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice pictures about this. Okay. So, when do we use which one, which script? Yeah. As a rule of thumb, you can say, if they are large, opponent, exploit resolution. So, targeting speed. If they are small, usually exploit range. What does this help me? <coughs> For example, if you are in a frigate and you want to attack a battlecruiser or a battleship, take, let's take a battleship. Like before, you are in a small ship and you fly to the battleship and he wants to lock you, to attack you, to send his drones at you or do other nasty things to you then he has to wait until he has locked you. Now you say, okay, it can take up to 30 seconds to lock a frigate for a battleship. Now we take two remote sensor dampeners with a bit higher skills as these, and then he sits there and have to wait one to two minutes till he has locked you and can do harm to you. And you're sitting in a frigate and lock him within... Five seconds. And then you put him down, call for your friends, and then they are slow, arrive a minute later, and the battleship has not finished his lock on you. That's nice, or? Huh? That's the effect of resolution exploits on big ship against small ships. Unfortunately, as soon as he has a lock, it does not anything anymore. It does not help you. Only if he loses his lock or he wants to lock additional targets, then it helps you again. On the other hand, if you range damp a ship that his targeting range is below the distance between your two ships, then he loses his lock and has to regain it. This is especially useful if you fl uh, fight against small ships. For example, if a frigate, especially interceptors, have a small targeting range, they usually use modules to get a higher targeting range because often their um, warp disruption range is higher than their targeting range, especially if they overload it and have high skills. And then, if you just put one remote sensor dampener with range dampening on him, he loses his lock and can't do his job as an interceptor. Or he has to come more near to you and, for example, then be hit by smart bombs or other nasty things you have on your big ship. We have two ships on the Galanti side which are bonus for it. This is the frigate-sized Maulus. Once again, the same or nearly the same bony as the other ships so the one is the same 7.5% for two effectiveness per level and here we have a 10% reduction to the capacitor need Celestis is the cruiser sized boat and here we have the effectiveness bonus 7.5% and here a range bonus for optimal and fall off. So here the range bonus switched from the frigate sized to the cruiser sized ship and the cruiser has no weapon bonus anymore like the Minmatar and the Marion's head. Okay, so when it is useful for PvP as I said before, for example, useful against snipers to reduce their range. It's useful against large ships, especially when paired with ECM. So, why? ECM breaks locks or not? Yes, but this is chance-based. 
it gets a chance to break a lock every 20 seconds. And so if you now can reduce the locking time, well, better is you reduce his resolution and his locking time gets up, then your ECM colleagues have several chances to break his lock before he can regain it. So you can pair it with ECM and get a high usefulness against large ships. And it can break locks if the targeting range is damped below the distance of your ships. So you can break locks with range dampening and remote sensor dampening. So, and now this one is used, again, on stealth bombers quite frequently. Either to slow down the locking times, because stealth bombers are frigate-sized and they usually attack bigger ships. So we slow down the locking time that they cannot be targeted by the enemy ships held down or attacked. Or they reduce the range of the enemy so that they can in principle fly around if they are attacking a single target at 20 kilometers and the enemy ship cannot reach out to them with their sensors, cannot lock them and so cannot harm them. You often see remote sensor dampeners on stealth bombers. Okay. This is what I wanted to tell you about the Galanti form of EVO remote sensor dampening. And as you've heard before, as a Galanti pilot, I now want many interested questions about remote sensor dampening. So please type them into the channel and we'll try to answer them. Um, there was a question by Damon Diaz Doom. Prefer Maulus or Celestis? Um, you can use both. The Maulus is a frigate sized ship. It warps faster, it aligns faster, it flies faster. The Celestis is a bit sturdier and um, can field more modules, has a higher range. So, in principle, it's up to you. Usually, if you have the skills, and, of course, uh, enough ISKs, then feel the Celestis, if you are in a fleet which has bigger ships. Of course, in a frigate-sized fleet, only take the Maulers. And um, in a bigger ship fleet, take the Celestis. So, as a general question, can Iwar do anything Oop. to drones? In principle, yes, but usually you're fighting against a lot of drones, and then it's not so effective. And keep in mind, I mentioned this before, NPCs have awful long tra um, tracking ranges for a player character. The highest locking range, for example, is 250 kilometers, and for NPCs it's much greater. So, for example, a range dampening or so is not... Uh, uh, very interesting against NPCs. Um, what sort of movement do you suggest the dampener ship to use while it's dampening orbit target, orbit a friendly ship? I will talk about this later, how to use e warships. So, old Podine, please keep this question in mind. We will come to this at the end of the lecture. Um, the Hydra, you mentioned PvP. What about PvE? Does this also work? No. Range dampening, for example, does not work in PvE because against NPC PC ships with the awfully long ranges, it's not useful. And usually you don't care about how fast someone can lock you. Not someone, but something can lock you in PvE. In principle, uh, E-War works against enemy NPCs, but uh, here it doesn't have a great effect. There, more people use either target painting or sometimes they use cap warfare, but this is a completely different story. Question by Carl Syntastic. May have misunderstood sensor dampening is good for using against stealth bombers or by stealth bombers. It's uh, a by stealth bombers. Stealth bombers are frigate-sized ships, and then, then they 
usually because they use torpedoes, so a large missile, then uh, they attack large ships, and then they use this against the large ships, usually battleship or bigger, perhaps battle cruisers. Question by John Bucket. If you have two remote sensor dampener, one, one with scan resolution dampening and one with targeting range dampening, does the penalty come into effect? No. If you have scripted them differently, there's no uh, stacking penalties. So if you have two modules and one of both effects, please script them and you have a higher effectiveness. Question by Devious, is there a counter to sensor dampening, and if so, how much does it reduce effectiveness of the dampening? Um, in principle, there's a counter to every form of EVO, and um, it's usually not part of this class, it's part of EVO 102, it's, so it's counter EVO, but I can answer this question. There are modules which give you a higher targeting range, and which are modules which give you a higher scan resolution, these are the sensor boosters, and these are, in principle, the counter. And they have the advantage without EVO applied to you that you have a higher scan resolution or a higher um, targeting range. Okay, last chance to ask questions about the nice form of EVO done by De Galenti. Else I have to go to the Caldari form of EWA. Okay. We carry on with the Caldari form of EWA. Once again, defensive form of EWA against enemies, ships, sensors. So once again, sensors. We already had the Galantis. It's a bit different. I have to say, ECM is by most people considered the most useful, yet most complicated form of e-war. So why? I think you will learn that during... Okay, against sensors. So what do we have to look at now? Okay, please open your fitting window. Directly below, you see a symbol and then something with points, a number with points. And if you hover over it, you see sensor strength. And this is what we are now aiming at, the sensor strength. Here the numbers are low for small ships, high for bigger ships, and also with a bit of racial differences, usually Caldaris have a high sensor strength and Minmata the lowest. And if you hover over it, you also see that there's not only sensor strength, but also another word. And this depends on your ship. For example, if you have a Caldari ship, I should read gravimetric sensor strength, Minmetar's LADAR sensor strength, Amerian's radar, and Galenti magnetometric. And the Galenti should have a green symbol, Caldari blue, Amerian's yellow, and Minmetar red. So, here's the color code again. So, what's this color code? Yeah. This we'll learn now about. Because there's not one module for ECM. Now the color code comes into play and the racial forms of sensors. I will just paste you the first four. These are the Meta Zero Tech One modules for ECM. For every race, for every color, you have one projector. And this is the mid slot module you use. So before you undock your ship, you have to know which ships you are fighting against, that you can equip the right modules. This you can only do in the station 
or for example, if you have a main ship with a maintenance bay in space, like an all-car or a carrier, which we usually not have in our fleets, or you fit a so-called rainbow, this means at least one of each type. So, and what does this module do? I'm now taking the spatial destabilizer and click on it, left click. So you see it has a blue symbol. It's against Caldari. Caldari are blue. Projects random bursts of gravitons dis disrupt accurate targeting. As expected, the system works against gravimetric targeting system. Gravimetric Caldari. Yet nothing about stacking penalties. These are the EVO modules which are not due to stacking penalties. So keep this in mind. But they are chance-based. If you have a look at the Attributes tab, then you see Gravimetric Strength 3, the other three sensors 1. So it works against the others 2, but with a much reduced effectiveness. Against Gravimetrics 3. This is without any bony or skills. So, for example, if you are a, have a frigate as an opponent, which usually has a sense of strength less than 10, you would have roughly a 30% chance to break his targeting lock and make him unable to lock for 20 seconds. In 20 seconds, he can start locking again. This is the same as the activation time. So, in principle, the activation time and the looking is, uh, looking disruption time are the same. So, in principle, you can keep him out of being able to lock if you hit every time. But you need to correct module 4 to correct race. If you look at the other races, it's all the same. Only the bonus form of sender it works against is different. Okay. But now, <laughs> it's even nastier. There's another module, the multispecter. So, you should still have one module open. For example, I have still the spatial destabilizer open. And now please shift left click spectral jammer. Now you should have gotten another window in which you can compare these two. Because multispectral sounds nice. So works against everything. We don't have to keep in mind what color is what. And we are effective against all. So if you have both open, we can compare the attributes tabs. At first we have a look about the sensor strength difference. At the specialized module we see 3111, okay? At the multispectral we see 2222, okay? It's not as effective against the correct target of a specialized form, but it seems to be <laughs> It seems to be more effective against others. So, sounds nice. Okay, but please have a look at the optimal range and the actual referral of the range of this module is only two-thirds of the specialized module. So it has a lower range. And if you look up at the activation costs, it, has, it needs 50% more cap. So as you already heard, ECM modules, or especially EWO modules, have a high cap usage. So the multispectral jammer has more cap usage, less range, and is not as effective when you use the correct jammer. Usually in, in EUNI, we try to field either rainbows, or we try to use the correct jammers against the enemy's fleet. Sometimes you have this information because you have a scout who's looking at the enemy and can tell you which races the ship the enemy flies. 
usually it tells you not the races, but it tells you the ship names. And then you have to look it up or know it in between. That's why I linked the ship lists before. Get used to them. And after some time, you will know, oh, a Drake is a Kildare missile boat. Same for Caracal, for example. And then you know which jammers you need. If you have a look at the fitting window of the two ECM jammers, then you also see that the multispectral jammer has a higher CPU need. So it uses more of your fittings. Okay, I hope I've convinced you to fly rainbow and not try to fly just multispectrals because it's more convenient. There are high bony for this by the correct ships, by the correct skills. And then it gets much higher. There was already a question of Henry Crane, what's the actual chance to jam an enemy? The answer to that is one of the answers you hear most in EVE. It depends. Because, for example, with a specialized boat, like I'll post in here, and you have not you use not the Tech 1 modules, Meta zeros, but Meta 4, for example, and other things, then you have more than 100% chance, for example. But usually your chances are around 30 to 70%. Depends. Skills, I'll come to. We're not finished, so please give me perhaps five minutes till I've finished with uh, the ECM part, and then we can go on. Okay. I will come to that. And when I've finished, I probably have answered, hopefully, most of these questions. So, now, the Caldari and their form of EWAR, the ECM, is a bit different from the others, not only because it's chance-based. They are also the only one which has a low slot mod which gives them a higher effectiveness. So we have the signal distortion amplifier. It's a low slot module, which gives you a higher strength, ECM strength, and a higher range. So it's an advantage about the others. But on the other hand, if you use your mid slots, for jammers and your low slots for distortion amplifiers, you have no place for a tank. But they have the choice, the others not. And of these signal distortion amplifiers, there are also tech 2 variants, and then you have higher bony. So you can get your chances up. And we're still not at the end. There's another ECM module. It's the ECM burst module. So, what does this thing do? It's also a medium slot module. It's not racial. So it works against all. If you left click on it and have a look under the attributes tab, it has a six point strength against all. We learned before, three point from specialized module, now six against all. Sounds much better, or? But then, you see only five kilometers range, and it's a burst range. What does it mean? It is a burst around your ship of five kilometers. It does not need a lock. You can fire it but it hits everything within these five kilometers. And it is a very high energy co activation cost, 240 gigajoule. So that's more or less the whole capacitor of a frigate. If you now have multiple ships within this range, you could, in principle, kill them all, uh, not kill them all, but kill all their senders, at least for 20 seconds, but your cycle time is now longer, so you cannot uh, kill the locking all the time. And you hit everything in that radius. So if you use this in high sec and have anything 
which is not a war target in this cycle, Concord will pay you a visit quite fast. Or, if you are, for example, in low, start, in, in low sec and hit anything which is not a valid target, you will uh, lose security status. Gate guns, station guns may start firing at you. So, I don't advise you to use this module if you're not very sure what you're doing. Especially because of the low range of 5 kilometers, it won't give you too much of an advantage. Sometimes it's used by haulers, but with this low range, you usually don't have the tacklers which hold you down in this range. Usually further away. So I just want to mention this module. Please not use it if you're not absolutely sure you need it. Okay, skills. I will come to the questions later on. I want to now give you also that the first skill, electronic warfare, is the cap reduction skill, 5% per level. You need level 4 for the next skill, which is signal dispersion, which gives you 5% more effectiveness. One word about electronic warfare, the skill. This skill you do not only need for ECM modules, also needed, for example, for e-war drones, all e-war drones. So if you're interested in using e-war drones, you have to learn electronic warfare. It's a prerequisite for the use of e-war drones. It's not very nice. All people are forced to, to learn the Caldari form of e to use all e-war drones, but unfortunately it's uh, included in the game. ECM burst says can only be fitted on battleships, that's correct, but you can fit it even on frigates. Please don't please don't tell anyone but I had a frigate once which was uh, uh, fitted with an ECM burst and it worked. But uh, this I did not on my uni character. Okay. Ships, frigate sized griffin. 15% bonus to strength? Hmm. Why? So the bonus is now doubled in comparison to the others. And here, 10% bonus to ECM, target jammers capacitor, so capacitor usage. Okay. Cruiser size, Blackbird. Same bonus to strength, 15%, and 12.5% bonus to optimal range and fall-off. So more or less the same bony as the Celestis, but a bit higher. Hmm. Sounds like CCP likes Caldari pilots. But on the other hand, all the players dislike Blackbirds or Caldari ECM if they are not on their side. So if you fly an ECM boat... Be assured, everybody likes you and wants to kill you. That's how they show it. Now, they have a third Tech 1 ship, which does E-War. As the only race, three Tech 1 ships. It's the Scorpion, battleship-sized ECM ship. 15% bonus to strength, 25% bonus to optimal and fall-off. So even doubled the bonus of the Blackbird. With only Battleship 4, you get a 100% bonus to range. So your effective range is doubled. And you get a 60% bonus to gem strength. So the bony here are so high that ECM is used almost exclusively on specialized boats, which are three for Tech 1, and there are a few Tech 2 ships, which I will not go into detail within this lecture. One and a half hours, even if we have uh, problems at the start. I think I'm quite fast this time, usually I'm slower. So, okay. Here, 
It use, it's against enemy ship sensors, so it affects everything, missiles, turrets, and so on, like the Galanti form. That's very similar because it's against the sensors. But it's chance-based. You cannot tell exactly if it works or not. And uh, therefore, you have to be lucky that it works. But on the other hand, you can be lucky. For example, sometimes a griffin, like probably skip pimp, is, uh, wanted to point out, sometimes a griffin gets very lucky and is able to get three bigger ships out of the game for 20 seconds, which can help you very, very much if you can take out enemy ships for some time. And here you see why we are at the uni always say, Fly E War, it's fun, because you just started as a pilot, you're one week old, you hop into a E War ship, <laughs> and you're very good at annoying people which play this game for years, but you can do it. Okay, when do we use it? In PvP, it's useful to disable a potentially dangerous ship while other ships go in for the kill. Yeah, of course. And it's often considered the most useful forms of all EVO due to the ability to re completely remove an enemy from the battle, at least for 20 seconds. Yeah, unfortunately I have to tell you, yes, it can be very, very effective. The ECM, even though it's the EVO form of the Kill Diary. Okay. This is what I want to tell you about the Kildare form of EVO. There's already the first questions. I give you some time to post more questions and then I'll try to answer them. Okay. Coming to the questions. First question by Dragor Bane. Ship race predictability on average. What's the most common race field in PvP as the rainbow approach could be hit and miss? It's different. Sometimes you have this information because um, your scout can tell you in advance what you're flying against. For example, if you go against um, war targets, you sometimes know what we prefer to fly. Or if you're going to certain range, certain areas in space, then you might know what you're up to. But usually you cannot count on that information. So it can be different. Um, but usually, in a lot of ta uh, a lot of times, you have different races, so you won't usually not be only approaching, for example, now say Kildare ships as an opponent. Usually, you have a mixture. But uh, once again, it depends. A question by Kexpel: If I break up. A target lock on me with enemy modules like scram points and so go on instant, go away instantly or at the end of the circle. They go off instantly. If a break is, a lock is broken, then they are instantly away. So for example, if you are scrammed, the enemy is jammed, then you can instantly warp off or use your micro warp drive again. Um, car Syntastic Assume, for sake of argument, you put all modules on one target. Seems like 3111 <laughs> equals 6 versus 2222 yeah. equals 8 makes multi 4 effective. Obviously not the case, so I must be missing something. Uh, usually you're not up against one target. If you are in a fleet with multiple ships and only engaging one target, it's a question, do they need you at all? But if you're fighting multiple ships, then usually you have different races, and you can put your modules on the right race it works best against. This would be the answer I'd give you. On the other hand, you also need more fitting space for the multispectral jammers, and you have to be much nearer to the target, so making you a more interesting ship to shoot at. Okay. More questions. But 
on the other hand, there are approaches where you use um, multispectral jammers, for example, where are some two um, versions of the Caldari ECM chips, and there you use two spectral jammers. Because that's then, like you said, one-on-one -on -one chip. But that's uh, very specialized chips and more for solo or very small-scale PVP. Not f and it won't be something you will do within the first weeks or even months uh, in the game. Okay. If there are no more questions. I will go on, more or less, to the end of the lecture with some general comments. For all the defensive forms of E-Wars, it's not useful against non-targeting ships, for example, smart bombing battleships, fiend or foam missiles, or drones. If you have taken a drone boat completely out of the field by range dampening, resolution dampening, ECM, or you shut down its turrets by tracking disruption, but it's if it has wounds, he cannot, if he lost control these drones, that they are set to attack what attacks me, then we will still attack one of your ships. The advantage is it mustn't be the most fragile, and it mustn't be that all drones attack the same ship, but keep this in mind. Also, what I did not mention, there are rigs which can enhance specific or some rigs are also for all types of E-War, especially strengths of E-War or range of E-War. So, I hope I told you something about the four forms of basic E-War, that there are similarities and differences between the four times, that there are offensive and defensive forms of E-War. Okay, offensive is just one. I hope you learned a bit about scripts and about the racial and non-racial use of what's the color code for the Caldari. And there are also skills which are useful for all forms of E-War. Once again, these are two. The first one is long-distance jamming. Sounds like ECM, because ECM is jamming, but this is a skill which is useful for all forms of EVO. It gives 10% bonus to the optimal range of every form of EVO. And the other one is frequency modulation. which gives you fall-off. So both are range bony. Usually I would now talk a bit about uh, optimal and fall-off, but we already did this during the lecture. So we don't need to do it here. There are some skills which are not specially attractive for E, especially for Evo, but they are attractive for all parts of EVE, this is targeting. You need it to lock up more targets. Sometimes in EVO boat, you have several targets. For example, on a full rainbow fit ECM ship, you would need at least four targets locked up. So this is a skill you need. Long range targeting. Yeah. You usually sit at high ranges, so you should be able to lock the target. So, this gives you 5% bonus to targeting range. The last one of this block, the targeting block, the signature analyzes. 5% more targeting speed, 5% more resolution for your scanners. The faster you can lock the target, the faster you can apply a form of EWAR, the faster you can help your fleet mates. Okay. As I told before, EWAR modules are cap hungry. So it's probably not a bad idea to look into energy systems operation and energy management. These skills help to sustain your cap so that you must not shut down your email models or your modules are shut down because your cap is empty. This is something 
you always need energy. Okay. One last link for the class. If you are interested in Yiwa, then also and you want to fly in the uni as a specialized e pilot, have a look at this e Pash to talk key so that you can talk only with the other e ships in fleet. I must admit that I haven't seen it used so much in the late, latest month, but perhaps it comes up again and then you know how to find it or you've already set it up correctly. This allows people to only speak within the EVO group. For example, to say who does what. Yeah, EVO is always nice. Okay, so this is more or less the part about EVO 101, which skills you need, which ships you need, and so on. No? <laughs> there was a question by Kerkos uh, Esculeta. Does long distance jamming affect the ECM burst radius? No. I think of the skills and so on, there's only the Scorpion which has a bonus to the ECM burst radius. So it's not affected by other skills. Also not affected by the low slot modules, the signal distortion amplifier. The burst radius is more or less fixed if you don't have a ship which has a bonus for that. So my final comments about E-War will be about the three parting rules of E-War. I learned them during the E-War classes. I heard Miranda Glade and she, she told them three parting rules of E-War. These three are arrive fashionably late, hang back from the main crowd and bail when it's no longer fun. So what does this mean? Arrive fashionably late. You should not be the first ship on the field which lands. In principle, if the fleet commander tells you to walk in, you can wait a few seconds until you warp in. Especially if you're on an ECM ship and you are along the first pilots on the field, you're also along the first pilots off the field because you're on a fragile ship and you can do nasty things to your opponents. So the enemy likes to burn you down. The first one on the field be among the last. Not too late, but give the others a few seconds in advance if you have the chance. Hang back from the main crowd. Usually your E-War has quite a long range. The cruisers usually don't have a problem to get up to 100 kilometers of range, especially the Celestis and the Blackbird. Use this range. Even the frigates can get ranges above 50 kilometers, both for their targeting ranges and their optimals, or optim slightly above optimal. Use this range. The only difference, for example, would be ships, especially the Bellicos, because they are uh, usually get much nearer to the fight because the weapon systems are also used and usually they are not focused that fast as, for example, an ECM ship. But usually I'd say use your range, stay out of the thick of the fight, hang back from the main cloud. Last word, bail when it's no longer fun. As an EVO pilot, if you get on the field, the first thing you should do is align to celestial to a mid-warp, whatever, to a safe spot, that by your E-war, and if you are targeted, or even shot at, leave the field, turn around, come back at another spot, and start harassing the enemy, applying your form of E-war again. Because usually, all the ships are quite fragile, they pop very fast, so the best is to stay a long life either by sitting 
far off. Or leaving when someone is shooting at you or someone gets near to you to tell you. Because you survive long in your ship. It's usually better to bail out, come back in, and apply your Evo again. Because if you then stay a few seconds longer, your ship is killed, then you can't do your Evo any longer. Okay. If there are more questions now about general things about Evo, because all my notes are finished now, you can ask them. And just type them in the, in the channel. We'll do this for a few minutes on. There was a question from Mitas. Hailborn is the Scorpion a pretty good solo ganking ship? I don't know exactly, but I have not heard of so many people doing it. At least I think I have no one heard about doing it. So uh, my answer would be I think no. They do this sometimes with the Tech 2 ships, Tech 2 cruisers, for example, with the Falcon. But not, uh, I've not heard of someone using a Scorpion for that. But a Scorpion is a very good supporting ship for uh, fleets, and also for small fleets, because the Scorpion has a long range, can stay far away, and then uh, help the fleet out. Which Evo types work best together, in your opinion, by Kaliox? I know only of one combination of EWAR types, and this is uh, remote sensor dampening and ECM. So remote sensor dampening in terms of scan resolution dampening. This can work very nicely together. Uh, that's a nice remark of Handsome Syslak. When you bounce to a celestial or bookmark, bounce to a different celestial or bookmark before coming back, so you come back at a different angel to the fight. That's correct. And what you can also do is, if you have to warp out, drop a book mark right after it out or right before you come back in because the from the fight gets shorter. Question from Bold Pudin regarding movement. Your movement should be aligning to your warp out. Not orbiting anything. Won't it put you out of range eventually? That's possible. But usually you don't have uh, a problem with that because your range is usually quite high. Then you le lose perhaps a bit of effectiveness, but you can warp out fast. And no one hinders you if you get to your range uh, limiting that you then align to a different point. Ah! <laughs> Neville already posted the announcement for, your, for Drones 101. So if you're still here, then join this class also if you have the time. I don't know if, it's, if it is told by Neville. Is it? Sounds like. Looks like. Okay, if it is told by Neville, hear this class. Because Neville gives very interesting and nice lectures. And he's also, for some of you, a Galanti pilot. So, okay, more questions. We'll still have a few minutes before the next class will drive us out here. And else, thank you for joining this class. One question. Has anyone had a look at the numbers we had in this class? Because I forget about that. Where was a question about... Uh, for Logi ships, T2 cruises are a lot stronger than T1. Is this the case with E-War? Um, Yes, they are stronger, but sometimes we have other drawbacks. For example, the Kaleri ships, the Kaleri Tech 2 e ships lose the, race, uh, the range advantage. The Tech 1 ships have much longer ranges, so they can stay far out, but they have uh, a lower bonus. So you can think of them as less specialized, 
but with another, uh, other advantages, with the only exception the Qadari. Usually the Tech 2 ships have another form of Evo where bonus for.